Good morning. Good morning. Say good morning again, Ebenezer. Good morning. We're going to have our scripture reading this morning from Psalm 24. Again, our scripture reading this morning is going to be from Psalm 24. And shall we read? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, no sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. I have read to you Psalms 24, verses 1 through 5. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearers, and doers of his most holy word. Y'all may be seated. I'd like to say good morning to each and every one of you all. Our special guest, the class of Murphy, 1971. Yeah. I'd like to say good morning to you guys. I grew up with most of you guys, although I'm a rattler, but we all come together. Yeah. I'm going to give an opportunity for the other individual to come in and be seated before I start the prayer. We're going to go to the throne in a minute here. Ebenezer, you know how we do it in here. Our visiting friends, you will learn how we do it in here. If the Lord has been good to you, we're going to give the Lord a hand of a clap, and not Alabama. Now let's go to the throne, and let's give the Lord some most thanks for all his many, many blessings that he has stored upon us and where he has brought us from and where he has brought us to as of today. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, Father, we come to you this morning, Father. We come to you as humble as we know how to say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our lying down and our early rising this morning, Father. Father, you had your darling angels just to circle around and protect us, Father. We thank you for that, Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this blessed day that you have given us, Father, that we'll never see again. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you look down on us, Father, and touch us, Father. Touch our heart. Give us some love, Father, for one another, Father. We need you, Father, and we need you right now. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless the bereaved family, Father. Let them know that they're not alone, Father, even though it's a time now that the chain has been broken. But you can, you can call on the Lord and the Lord will answer, Father. We understand that you will answer. When the phone calls stop and the visits stop, Father, we have nobody else to turn to, Father. We can fall down on our knees in our private sector and we'll just talk to you, Father. Your line is never busy. And we thank you for that, Father. That's our line of communication with you. Heavenly Father, we ask that you just bless our pastor, Father, as he go through what he has to go through this weekend coming up, Father. It's a hard thing to do for you to bury your own child. But Father, our pastor's a strong man and he can stand up to that, Father. He's done it many times. We thank you for strengthening him, Father. Prop him up, Father, where he's leaning. Wipe his weeping eyes, Father, you can do it. Heavenly Father, we ask that you just look down on this entire country. Touch us, Father. Give us some leaders that's going to do the right thing, Father. We ask asking this for you, Father. Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless each and every one here today upon the sound of my voice. 
touch them, bless them, Father. Father, we hope that they get something out of the sermon that they can take out, Father, and they can use and let their little light shine. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Father, bless Ebenezer as a whole. Bless all our administrators, Father. Bless all our Sunday school teachers and all our prayer warriors, Father. We need you, and we need you right now. Father, we thank you. Don't have enough tongues to tell you, Father, but we are going to tell you now. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything you have done for us, Father. And we just thank you. We just can't say it enough. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you just continue to bless us. Protect us, Father, as we travel through this old sinful world, Father. And, Father, when it's all over, Father, we ask that you be with us, Father, in that old four room. Hold our hand, Father. Tell us it's going to be all right. That you've done a good job. You fought a good fight. Oh, Heavenly Father, keep us on this Christian journey that we're on, Father. Let us keep the faith, Father. Sometimes we get knocked down, Father, but we know you can pick us up. And we thank you for picking us up, Father. You picked us up for many years, Father. We thank you for that. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless this sermon today. Bless the hearers. Most of all, bless the doers. In your son Jesus' name, Father, let the church say, Amen. Search me, Lord. Please search me, Lord. Well, turn your light, turn heaven. Oh, if you find should not be, take it out. I wanna be right, wanna be safe. I got to be home. Oh, search me, Lord. Please search me, Lord. Oh, turn your light, turn it from heaven down on my soul. Oh, if you find anything, take it out, Lord. I want to be right, want to be safe, got to be home. Let me tell you now, you know when I'm right, Lord. You know when I'm wrong. You know where I go. You even know where I belong. You know all I do. You even know my secret too. Lord, take me, search me, clean me up through and through. Every day of my life, will you search me, Lord? Please search me, Lord. Lord, turn your light, turn it from heaven down on my soul. Oh, and if you should find anything, please take it out, Lord. I want to be right, want to be safe, want to be whole. Oh, let me tell you, you know when I'm right. Lord, you know when I'm wrong. You know where I go. You even know where I belong. You know all I do. 
You even know my secret too Lord, take me, search me Clean me up through and through Every day of my life Will you search me, Lord? Please search me, Lord Father, turn your life Turn it from heaven Down on this soul of mine Oh, and if you just find anything, Lord Please take it out I want to be right Want to be safe Want to be around me I didn't have to despair Lord you told me you would be right there seems like all my problems had just begun didn't have to worry Lord they were already won oh Jesus oh Jesus oh I love Day. Felt so all alone When I needed you, Jesus All I had to do was call Sometimes in the morning Sometimes late at night When I got up on my knees Everything was all right Oh, Jesus Oh, sweet Jesus Oh, I love, I love calling your name. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, my doctor, Jesus. Jesus oh, I love your name is the same. Oh, Jesus, Jesus oh, sweet Jesus. Every day, your name is the same. To Pastor Overstreet, Reverend Hall other ministers in the congregation. Good morning. Good morning. This part of our service is set aside to welcome all visitors. If you're visiting with us for the first time this morning, please raise your hand. Amen. Thank you. The ushers will be handing you out a packet. Please fill out the information inside of it and return it back to them. We have some very, very special visitors with us this morning. 
the Murphy High School Class of 1971. Please stand, please stand. We want to thank you so much for coming out to worship with us. We know you could have chosen another place, but we're glad you chose Ebenezer. On behalf of Dr. Rudolph Overstreet and the Ebenezer Baptist Church family, we want to thank all of you for coming out to worship with us this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. The protocol has been established. As we close out the month of October, if we have anyone that has not been recognized for their birthday this month, would you please hold your hand up? Okay, amen. Eric. blessed with many more. Thank you. Good morning. We have an announcement, a card of thanks, your kind support to me and my family during the illness of the death of my husband touched us deeply. Your calls, cards, visits, and all the kind gestures rendered to us during this most difficult time was appreciated. And this is from uh, Sister Juanita Dowles, the widow of the late Leonard Dowles. Uh, the greeters mentioned this morning that the class of 1971 from Murphy High School is with us, and she mentioned that it's a special class. I agree, that's my class as well. <laughs> and I, I just don't want you guys to know, uh, I'm just about moved to tears to see you out there to support uh, our class. And we will be celebrating our 50 plus one reunion uh, this, this in December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. So we just ask that you be prayerful with us and ask that uh, God continue to bless the process. Having said that, this is a historic class. We know that everyone who graduated in 1971, you're special in your own way, but this class is historically uh, significant in as much as we integrated the largest high school in the state of Alabama, and it was a difficult task. <clears throat> but it just goes to show you when God is blessing the process, things that's intended not to be good turn out to be a blessing for you, and it was a blessing for all of us to go to Murphy that year because, again, we found out things that we just didn't know. We thought we had superior resources at our school. We thought we had superior this, superior that. You know, kind of like in the psalm, we didn't have bitly compared to them. And so, again, the Lord just put us in a place. Uh, we weren't necessarily welcome, but, again, he blessed us, and, and, and we're just uh, thankful to be here. Pastor, I also want to take personal liberty because we have another special guest with the former school board commissioner, Hazel Fournier. And, uh, and Commissioner Fournier was at the forefront of that integration process with interventions and in trying to ensure that we got a fair shake at Murphy as well as other integrated schools. So I want you to uh, uh, just uh, allow Commissioner Fournier to make some comments to our class as well as you regarding the historical significance of our class. Commissioner Fournier. Let's give her a welcome, Ebony. <clears throat> Eleanor. Eleanor. This is one of my children. Wait a minute, they can hear me. I, I, is there anyone in here can hear me? If you, if you can't hear me, then uh, do something for your ears. Help yourself. <laughs> I want to thank. Mr. Rogers, I called him one of my children. He 
it was difficult. First, let me congratulate the classmen. I congratulate you because you had perseverance. You know, the Bible says pray without ceasing. You worked hard without ceasing. But you know what? I want you to pray for those who did not come this morning, who were in your class. They have not been as successful as you have been. And they need your support too. This is a historic church with a historic pastor. We are blessed to be here this morning. And, and I'm not going to stand up here too long, Mr. Rogers. Uh, you know, uh, let me just add something to this significance. This 50 years. You know how hard it was for you to walk down the halls of mercy. Yeah. And I was there to help you. Now Murphy has, as you implied, some things that were not to be. Murphy this year has his first black person. God is a mighty God. And he can turn us around upside down and do anything he wants to. So not only are you celebrating your 50 years, 50 years later on, it has its first black principal. And I understand he's doing a magnificent job. I thank you for coming. Pray for those who didn't feel comfortable enough to come, that hadn't had it as easy as you have. Maybe they didn't have the perseverance, their strength. And I call Mr. Rogers one of my children because he is. He's been with me a long time. I was with him in Murphy, and I'm still with him. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Reverend Oversby, for allowing me this moment. And Mr. Hall, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. And finally, we have a presentation, and we'll ask uh, my classmate Eleanor to make that presentation. Good morning, Ebenezer Baptist Good morning. Church. Good morning. Reverend Overstreet, other pastors of the gospel, members, friends, class of 1971. We would like to present to Ebenezer Baptist Church a token of our love and appreciation for having us with, here with you today. Thank you for opening up your doors to us. This is a special class. Most of us have been together ever since first and second grade. It's not many people that can say that. We are so blessed. Thank you so much. And please, have us come again, not just for this occasion, but for anything that you might need us to do. Thank you. I don't want to be redundant, but good morning. Glad to see all of y'all here. I want to thank Ebenezer for coming out too, sister. Stephanie let a uh, mother going home. She was 96 years old. But let me recommend something, for Ebenezer, what we want to do for future. We have a, a member of this church, and their loved one have to come from out of town. We had a lot of members here. But let us all come and support that family. That's, that's what, that's no more than right. We was a lot here, but we want more to come. Because it happened to her this time, but what? Your time coming. Amen? Because love is what love what? Amen. Thank you very much for that. Now, I'll say this. The home going for Valerie Overstreet will be this coming Saturday. I think it's 5th. In November, beginning at 11 o'clock. Amen? Amen? So I would thank all of you all so far for your cards, your telephone calls, 
and everything that you have done. We appreciate it very, very much. Amen? Uh, I'm going to be preaching the funeral. I told someone this. If I could preach my mother's funeral, I'd preach my brother's funeral. And I thank God would give me the strength to preach my firstborn funeral. With God, you can do all what? All things. Amen? Now, I just received this before I came in church. Deacon Aaron has one. One is on Sister Edna Douglas' desk. I'm going to need the trustees to do something uh, before, by November the 8th. They're talking about rezoning around here. I fought that before, but when we had John William, it wasn't no problem. But I lost my man in the bag. He retired. So I'm going to have to find another man in the bag to go down and uh, fight this. Now, trustees, if you are not able to handle this, Rem Hall, Dick and Aaron, myself, we can handle it. Amen? So we're giving y'all first shot at it. Uh, let us do what we have to do for the people that live around here. Amen? Amen. Once again, we want to thank Murphy for class of 1970 so taking their time out of their busy schedule to come and worship with us here at Ebenezer Baptist Church. We don't take that lightly because you could have gone to your own church. But praise be to God you came here today to fellowship with us and we all we want to say thank you. And Sister Farnia, we always glad when you come by and just sit with us and be with us. May God bless all of you all this morning. Amen. Amen. And I pray that something will be said today that will help you throughout this day because tomorrow is not promised to us. So I hope it worked for you today. May God bless all of you. Now remember, I was sick and I shut in and I bereaved, bereaved family at this time. Eh? Let us continue to look on, pray for them, and whatever you can do, just do it. Amen? Amen. Because sometimes you know what we say. Oh, if I just follow my mind, is your mind telling you to pray? Pray now. Mind telling you to send them a card? Send it now. Amen? But you never know what's going to happen. I mean, thank you very, very much. That's about it. I'm not leaving out anything. I'm okay, we good. Put this book in my Bible. Let me put my Bible there. Just thank God for another opportunity to come together in the house of prayer one more time. Beautiful, thankful for all of you all here this morning. We pray that something will be said 
today. Now, we, this will be a continuation from the last time. I didn't preach last Sunday, but we're talking about the shepherd, the 23rd Psalm. We pray that if not, it will be a three-part because this is going to be with the second part. You can't do it all in one Sunday. It's too much in between that to give to you. Amen? So if you have your Bibles, we'd love for you to turn to the 23rd number of Psalms. We're going to begin with verse 3 and go all the way to verse 6. The first time we did verse 1 and 2, that's all we could get through with. Amen? But 3 through 6, Psalms, 23rd number of Psalms. When you find it, we're going to ask you to please stand. If you're able to, if you're not able to, please do not stand for the reading. Amen? Psalm 23, beginning with verse 3. Shall we read? Please remain standing. Our gracious Heavenly Father, as we come this morning, Lord, with many situations in our lives, but you being the God that you are, we know you are able to take care of all of our, our needs. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, now to give those strength to those who feel so weak. Regulate one mind when they feel like he doesn't know what to do and how to think. But most of all, Lord, we just ask you to just walk with us on a daily basis. Because all of us need help in some form or fashion. Remember those bereaved, Lord, now with head hanging down and tears flowing like a faucet and spirit of very low. We ask you to equip them, lift them up, tell them you will never leave them nor forsake them. And truly, Lord, we'll be so thankful in the mighty precious name of Jesus. Today we pray, amen and amen. You may be seated. Today we will continue with the 23rd Psalm. First time you've, we talked about to you about David. Most of you just only know about David. The subject is the shepherd. You only know about David and Bathsheba, but it was more to this young man and man than that. We talked about that he was about 15 years old when God anointed him to be king of Israel. We talked about the first king, Saul, was a king of the flesh. Man wanted him. Second king, David, was going to be king of the spirit of God. As you know, Saul was the tallest man in the whole country of Israel. But now David has lived a life. He's had trouble like most of us with his children. Had many wives and concubines. But I left you with the last time saying to you, one thing David did not do, he did not turn and serve another God. God was always in David's life. And I don't care what happened to you or to me, but we should always keep God first in our lives. You know about David killing Goliath, 
Ishtar and the Vale of Elah. But it was more to him than that. He was a good looking guy like me. <laughs> Amen to that. Now you don't think I'm not gonna call myself unlooking, do you? You gotta be something wrong with you. If you don't think you look good, who's gonna tell you? Amen. Good looking guy. I mean, God know how to pick people, doesn't he? Well, I want you to look at two scriptures right now because they're going to play a very important part in your life forever when you think about David. I'm going to ask her to put up 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 12, and then we go into verse 13. Would you look at this? And he sent and brought him in. Now his daddy thought he was no good. He said, well, that old boy out there tending sheep. So Samuel said, you've got to have another boy. I got seven. I thought you had eight. What was them children? But what he did, Ruby guy, man, redhead fellow, beauty, content, good, look at it, good, good and looking. And, and the Lord said, arise and anoint him for this is what? This is he. If God pick you out, nobody can do you any wrong. Now, this is the verse I want you to remember what's going to happen to you when God choose you, when God is in your life, when God don't care what happened to you, God have already promised to take care of you. Now, look at this. And Samuel took the horn of the oil and anointed him in the midst of his brother, and the Spirit of the Lord came where? Upon David. Now, watch these other words. And from that day forward, from that day forward, God was going to be with David. Regardless of what happened, he sinned, yes, like we sinned, but what? God knew what he had in David, and David was always running back and asking God to forgive him. From that day forward, the Spirit of God stayed with David. Now, my Christian friend, People always talk about, you hear them talk about, oh, God ain't with you. If you save, God with you. Did you hear what I said? If you save, God is with you. And when you do wrong, all you have to do is go back and repent, and God will restore you back into the fold. Now, I'm going to get back to that verse pretty soon. So then Sammy rose and went back to his home in Ramah. My Christian friends, is Jesus your shepherd? Are you one of his sheep? Or are you in the fold? Or are you calling problem in the fold? You see, when David kept sheep, when a sheep kept getting in trouble, kept going the wrong way and was not listening, what would he do? He would break his leg and pick him up. And he would carry that sheep with him all day until he got well. He'd pick him up the next day. God will pick you up. If he have to chastise you and me, he will pick you up. He will not leave you all by yourself. He will take care of you because of one thing. That one thing he is, he loves you. And when you love a child, you would go the extra mile to help that child. Because that child is a gift from God. Now, I always want you to remember, sheep was not wild animals. They was the property of somebody. Somebody owned those sheep. They didn't, you never heard of a wild sheep. You know, sheep are not wild. They are owned by someone. Now, let's get with verse 3 here. There's an important word that happened to all of us. And that verse says, he restored my what? So, well, if something got to be restored, what? It has to be rescued. It is lost. You don't restore something that you already have. He had to rescue us. And the only way I can 
really identify that with that word is when I was a boy. People would come and they would call it restoration. We were still members. They'd been out like they'd been lost, but they finally made up their mind. And they come back to the church and they say, you want to be restored? What? To their right for membership. Y'all may didn't have that in your church. I'm a country boy. I've been a lot of places, but I'm country. But that's what we did. I don't care what you did, but when you came down that aisle and you made a confession that, Lord, forgive me, I've been wrong, but now I've seen the light. I want to be restored. I once was lost, and now I'm found. And you should receive that individual's with gladness of heart. Restore that what loved one back. Oh my God. It's a picture of what? Can you imagine you going astray, sheep's going astray? Then the shepherd go and find that sheep and restore that sheep back into the fold. God wants to restore you back. But some of us are so mean, we won't admit that we are wrong. We won't admit that we've gone astray. We will not admit that I've sinned and fallen far from the grace of God. And you cannot be restored if you won't tell yourself, I'm lost. I'm lost. I need to make some decision in my what? Life. Oh, my God. I'm sorry for, for what I've done. I need to be revived. I need to be revived. This is what David did. He, he was a man, he did a whole lot of damnable things. But one thing he would always do, he would run quickly to God and ask God to what? To forgive him. And you and I ought to remember to do the same things. Now, you probably never heard of this. They, what we call a slanger, Goliath did not have a, and I'm going to give you a verse, Goliath did not have a, a chance for getting by David. And don't listen to this tale, oh, he picked up five stones for Goliath's brother. You can't find that nowhere, that he picked up that for his brother. The job was right there before him because all of Israel was afraid. There's no fear in God. He restores my soul. And sometimes I tell Ebenezer when I pray sometime, and sometimes you can't feel the spirit around you. And I do my hand like this, and I say, God, where are you? Where are you? Then I don't check God, I check myself. Because there's something wrong with me. Something that caused me not to feel the spirit of God. What something I've done. Somebody didn't ask for forgiveness. For, somebody I shouldn't follow the rules of God. Somewhere I got off the track. And now I'm asking God to give me, put me back on the track. Because of one thing. I need him to answer my prayer. And all of us sometimes get off the track. And you need God to fix it for you in your life. Now, David was a slinger. He could throw that sling, and it is said, the tradition that the guy could take a sling, and he could throw it from 100 to 200 yards and hit his target. Hit his target. So Goliath didn't stand a chance when he said, come closer to me. Well, he must have couldn't see good, could he? He couldn't see good. He was getting right in the eyes out of David. There was slingers. Sometime when you see them in the Middle East, watch some of those boys got that thing. You see them sling those rocks. See, there was it. Well, they had the cavalry. That was the guy that rode the horses. They had the infantry. Those were the guy with the sword and arm and the shield and all. Then they had those archery guys. And then they had those slingers that went before you. All right, let me tell you about some slinger. Give me, okay, what I'm going to do here. Oh, I'm going. give me Judges chapter 20, verse 16. Give me Judges. Now, these guys was left-handed. Look here. Among all those people, there were 700 chosen men left-handed. Everyone could what? Sling us what? Sling a stone. 
I don't know why they was all left-handed, but that ain't for me to ask question there. They was all slinging and at their air breath and not what? They didn't miss. How could David miss a big old man like Goliath? Nine feet tall. Couldn't miss him. That was part. David grew up. Think about this now. He fought bears, lions, protected those sheep. That was nothing for him to throw a rock and hit a man. He was a slinger. You never heard. That's what he did. He slung that rock. All of that. Now, David messed up many times. But he had a need for this. He restores my soul. You ever fell down and out? You ever felt like sometimes something was missing in your life? And you just couldn't put your hands on it? And quit talking about, Lord, I tired. I go to church. That, uh -uh. He ain't worried about that. Are you saved? Are you saved? And he understood that so much. I'm going to ask you, like me, so many of us, God has already restored. But what happened to us, we won't tell anybody what God has done for us. You see, that's where the sadness come in. You take all the glory. You, you take all the reward. Your responsibility and obligation as a born again believer. What God has done for you, tell us, let somebody else know how great he is, what he will do for you. In time of trouble, God will stand by you. And when you're down there, he will lift you up. This God I'm telling you about will be your shepherd. All he asks you to do is be the sheep. You take care of you. Amen? Now, restores my soul. Give me Psalm 25 and 11. I'll go to that. You have Psalm 25 and 11. Give me Psalm 27. Oh, for thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon me. Pardon my iniquity. For it is what? Great. Great. Before I come up here a week, so I ask God to forgive me for my sins. Because some way down the line, I screwed up. Some way down the line, I say something to somebody and they took it the wrong way. Some way down the line, I did not want to be bad and I snapped. In order to do that before God, people, you got to ask God to forgive you. Before you come up here and saying you're going to preach the word of God. Or you're going to teach a Sunday school class. Or you're going to pray as a deacon. Unless you must come and ask God first. Who? True me, I'll holler sometimes. It's not that I'm not intelligent, but sometimes if you was a preacher, you'd want to holler sometime too. Correct God of mine. For my name's sake. Why I'm on that, give me Psalm 27 1. Give me Psalm 27 1. You love this verse so much. And I got to move on. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And he asked a question. Whom shall I what? Fear. Fear. God is not the author of fear. David knew those things. That's why he could pen these words. Because he realized one thing. That same God that was him out there with the sheep, the same God with him when he became king, the same God was him when he lost his first child. That same God here that keep him safe from Saul. That same God. Who oh, Jesus. But then he said something in this passage right there that all of us need in our lives. What did he say? The Lord heals my strength. Let me say to you, God is the source of your strength. He's the source of your blessings. All blessings come from God. The Lord is my strength. 
That strength is not pumping iron. That, no, not pushing a car. The strength is when tragedy hits your life. When disappointment come your way that you thought you had a job and you didn't get it. When you feel like folks been talking about you and you even don't want to come to church, that strength in God will lift you up, will make you stand. And he'll say, go on, because you are the strength of my what? My life. I want you to remember that. He is the strength of your life. Now, if God is the strength of your life, then he says something is so important to you and it's so important to me. And look what he said. Of whom shall I be what? Oh, Jesus. Whom shall I be afraid? Who are you afraid of? He's a man or a woman just like you. Oh, he may have more influence, but you got something he may not have. That's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You see what I'm talking about? You hear the God song say, stand by me, Lord. What? Stand by me? He'll stand by you. Yes, he will, my Christian friends. He will do all that for you. And then say this, I'm going to have to hurry up with this. And he just says, he leadeth me. Oh, he leadeth me. For his name, what? Sake. He leads you because he loves you. There's power. In the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. There's success in the name of Jesus. There's problem solved in the name of Jesus. But most of all, if you gather all those together, it comes out to one thing. There's power! Power! In the name of Jesus. And that's who you need to call. That's who you need to search out. There's power not in my name, not your name, not in Luke's name, but in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> then he goes on. He said this. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. You know, most of us don't want to be led by Jesus. Oh, we talk a good talk. I got this. That's what you say, I got this. You ain't got nothing. <laughs> what about you got? You don't, you don't have anything. Let me put it that way. You don't have anything worthwhile keeping. If God removed his hands from all of us, whew, what would become of us? And he said, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness. For what? For his name's sake. God wants all of us to obey him. He wants all of us to follow him. He wants all of us to recognize him, that he's God all by himself. That's why the scripture can say to us, David was a man after God's own heart. And I asked myself this question when I was preparing this. Not saying, why can't I be a man? After God, own heart. It's nothing difficult to you about that. No difficulty at all. All we have to do is obey God. Do what he asks us to do. Serve where we can serve. Help where we can help. And when we sin, run quickly back to him and ask him to forgive us. And then we will be a man after God, own heart. God love you when you repent. God loves you when you ask him to forgive you. That's what he's there for. And that's what he do for my name's sake. Why? He leadeth me. When I leave home, and you leave home every day if you don't do it, when you leave home starting tomorrow, if God lets you see tomorrow, you ask God to cover you. God, cover me. Cover me. Protect me. Provide for me. I don't know what's going to happen, but as long as I know you guide me and you lead me and you protect me, I'm going to be all right. This is the thing in our lives that we need to know as individuals. Not too much about, yeah, he killed Goliath. No, no, he's more than killing Goliath. He'll kill your enemy too for you. Amen? Yes, he will. He'll take care of your enemy. You don't need to fight your enemy. Let God do the battle fighting for you and to me. And he says here, 
for his, for his name's sake. And then he goes through this. Yea. Yea. What you talking about? Yea, though I walk through the valley. And you're going to have some valley experience in your life. You're not going to always be up on the mountaintop. There are some valley experiences you got to go through. You see, the more you go through, you understand that what God is with you. Let me say this to you. God will test your life if you say you his. But more than that, after you get through testing you, he'll take care of you. Yea, I walk through what? The valley. Oh, my God. Think about that. When you're walking through the valley, you don't have to walk where you put your feet because God is guiding your footstep every step of the way. It may be sickness. It may be death. You may be suffering from something, but God will guide you every step of the way. Just like he did the children of Israel, cloud by day, fire by night, he will guide you. One thing I want us to always understand as children of God is this. God won't do anything more for he did for Israel than he'll do for you. All of us are his children, so why would he put one on a pedestal and put one of us down here? God say, I show no partiality. Jesus so loved the world, God so loved the world, that he gave he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him, him now, not over street, him, shall not perish but have what? Everlasting life. What a joy that is to have everlasting life. Now, I got, I got about two minutes. I'm going to get away from here and I can't do this right now, but hey, through the valley. And guess what he said? I will fear no what? For thou are with me. Give me Psalm 27, verse 4 through 6. What, what, I'm going to ask you, what are you afraid of right now? I got to get you out of here. It's going to be 1230. We got to go. What, what, what are you afraid of? You afraid of losing your job? If God gave you that, he'd give you another. What you afraid of? You see, let me tell you about this. You ever seen an envelope? Or envelope, which way you want to call it. You put things in there and you do what with it? You seal it up. Only somebody know what's in there is you if you sealed it. All of us Fear have involved all of us one time or another. You as well to tell the truth. You may have afraid your child was not going to finish school. I don't know. You could have been afraid of that. You could be afraid you weren't going to pass the test. You could have been afraid of that. Fear happened to all of us. But God said, I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I should do what? Fear, no evil. Why? Because he answered it for you. For thou or what? With me. You see, a wife could be in an apartment store and she get into it with a customer, uh, with, the, with the person behind the counter. And she can go bold. And then what happened to her? She may be a little afraid if that husband walked up beside her. I got you. I got your back. Go ahead and talk. Ain't nothing going to happen to you. What? Who? That strength have come up. God has given you what? That protection. He has given you that provision for your life. Oh, some of y'all don't want to understand this, but I tell you, keep on living. Keep on living. Let's keep living. And I promise you, you're going to walk through the valley of the shadow. And you go through that valley, you don't know what's going to happen to you. Oh, I was going to read that back. I forgot up there. I'm going to read this and I'm going to be through. One thing I have desired the Lord 
that will I seek after that I may dwell where? <sighs> All days of my life. David realized that you and I got to serve God. Now you serve the devil. Oh, don't make like you haven't. I got a song I'm working on. I got a message I'm working on now. Save the last dance for me. Now I'll put that for this class. You know how you were when you were dancing and young God and you would say what? Well, that's my song. Come on, let's get up. That's my song right there. And you want to get up and know, I, I know that song right there. And then you were singing with it and you want to swing a little bit. That's my song. And well, that's all to be with David. All the days of my life. Behold the beauty of the Lord. Whew. And to inquire in his what temple? You ought to make God head of your life. Amen. Somebody asking me, say, how you making it? There's about three songs stuck is in my head, and I'll talk a little about it in five minutes. And I like the second verse for this song. Father alone. He knows all about it so cheer up my brother and then I sing this all the time I'm not a singer on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross <sighs> it's still a rugged cross and then Sister Dirt and Sister Reese. I love this one. And I'm by myself. I be by myself a lot now. Because I want to. And I say to myself, what a friend we have in Jesus. With all and grief we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And my Christian friends, as I close today, you're going to have to have something to take to God when man can't help you. You're going to have something to carry to God when the storm cloud is just coming down on you and it seems like it's going to sweep you away. But let God be your anchor. And if God is your anchor, whatever come your way, you will be able to hold, you'll be able to stand. God bless you today. There is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others. Oh. Oh. He'll do the same thing. Um, if you go extend the door for the discipleship, then maybe someone may be, want to be restored. None of us are perfect in this church. I don't know about other churches you go to. It's none of in here perfect, not even the preacher. None of us perfect. But we know we have a God that will stretch out his hand and welcome us back into the fold. Don't be afraid or don't be ashamed to tell, asking God, Lord, restore me. I love Save to me. call on the name of Jesus. Is that one? Is that I one? I love to call on the name of Jesus. I love to call on the name of Jesus. Church, I love on the name. I love to call on the name. Let me tell you. There is power in the name power. of Jesus. Power! Power! There is power in the power. name of Jesus. In his name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, I love on the name. I love on the name. Let me tell you, there is healing in the name of Jesus. 
There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. Oh, I love on the name. I love to call on the name of the Lord. Amen. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be the glory in the church through Jesus Christ throughout all ages. And the whole church sang. 